Hello guys and welcome to a new Steel Division video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you game one in the best of three between Light Rare and Eugen. And this is round one of the great Paradox Tawny. Today we're going to be seeing Sho, which is an interesting map because it has the town and the open fields, which leads to two very different styles of play across the map. And I think both divisions that we're going to see today can cater towards that. So that is the 2nd Armoured French Division and the 21st Panzer. 2nd Armoured, Fren Armoured French Division under command of Light Rare and Eugene is going to be taking that 21st Panzer on the Axis side. So I would expect to see the 2nd Armoured do well in Phase A and B. However, with the recent changes to the 21st Panzer, they aren't bad in Phase B especially as well. Um, they do have quite a nice amount of units in Phase A as well that makes them very versatile, like the S307 pack, uh, the Brumbar, and they also have the Panzerhaubitzer now, which has the HE and AP at 1200 meter range. So there's all that good stuff that we're likely to see out of the 21st Panzer. As for the French, well, it's probably going to be things like Stuarts in Phase A and um, generally just building up for a big armor push in Phase B. Um, to make as much ground as possible, but we'll see what, exactly what happens. Looks like Eugene's got most of his troops down anyway, so let's have a look at these. SBW-222s leading the charge all across the map with the recon, which is good. Then we've got uh, AT gun in the mid with a Panzergren and a Command Infantry. Also AT gun with Command Infantry on the bottom side as well. Then going into the town, two units of Panzergrens with a Command Infantry. Uh, supported by those 222s most likely. Then on the top side for Light Rare, looks like a half track M5 with probably voltages. Two units of Spy. We've got the M3A3 uh, Stuart. Um, there's also a Spy going to the mid with an AT gun and a command car, and I'm pretty sure that's the same in the bottom side. Yeah, exactly the same. So across the entire map, it's pretty much AT gun command on the bottom side for both players, and then sort of interesting infantry engagement in the top side going to be occurring um, with these jeeps and the spy going up against Panzergrens. I'm really surprised not to see Light Rare actually bring in um, Pioneers in the WC-52s just because the WC-52s provide that 50 cal fire support as well as the Pioneers being actually really good at close range. They are very very nice if you use them in conjunction with the Stuarts early on. However Looks like Light Ray has actually invested some cash into the DB7B smoke bomber, which is going to be dropping six smoke bombs. And that's going to be blocking off the line of sight for Eugen in the bottom side. I'm assuming this is to allow Light Rare to get his units into the position he wants them on the 50 50. Like, if he can get this AT gun into this bush, it would give him a lot of control over the bottom side. But it looks like Eugen here. It's going to unload and then hide the 222 behind the trees there, which is a really, really nice idea. So that's going to be helpful. Although this AT gun's moving down to the bottom side, so maybe that won't work out in the end. 222 is going to get a shot onto one of the Jeeps here, um, onto the Spy. And I'm pretty sure both players can see quite a lot of what's coming towards them. Uh, actually, Eugen can't see very much at all. His Alpha Cloud are not quite in the right positions just yet. Once the smoke clears, he will see what's behind it. Over here, however, these Alpha Cloud can't see anything. Alpha Cloud either side of the town can't really see much. So it looks like it's just going to be aggression into the town for Eugen at the moment. Let's jump back to the neutral perspective. We'll see the Panzergren start to take on these Spy. You can't fire back at that range, really. Well, they can use their M1 carbines, but that's only 2 HE. With the two, three star 222 on target, that Spy Squad goes down so quickly. U304 dies very fast to the M3A3. So, in order to deal with that M3A3, Eugen needs to get line of sight onto that with the 222 at close range. I'm not sure if this is close enough. No. I think Eugen realizes that and is going to back off because the front armor of the M303 can take quite a lot of punishment from the 222s. Now on this bottom side, we are seeing the AT gun start to fire at the 222 down there. 
S307 pack has been brought in. That's going to have the 1,200 meter range actually onto this AT gun. So would not be surprised to see Eugene maybe even fire position that, although he can't because it's not getting HE rounds. Either way, Panzergrens are going to be going for the church here. And we'll have to see what that reveals for him. We can now see the two new half tracks coming in. There is also, of course, the tank there and the half track behind. But he knows what's coming. A couple more units of uh, voltages. But the Panzergrens is going to be now jumping up into the face of the Spy. No Spy at close range. They can do a little bit of damage, however. Panzergrens have the hard cover, so that's not going to work out too well. But these Panzergrens being in this building does allow the fire support from the, the half tracks here. The 222, however, going to be popping one of the half tracks, the one with the, the 50 cal. That's quite big, actually. Spay go down. U304 is engaging the M5 half track. We've got the 222 slamming some of those voltages whilst the other Panzergrens fall back. And the Panzergren Fjellar are in the town. Now, this is an interesting choice because. They're going to get hammered, and he doesn't want to lose that Panzergrim together because otherwise his all of these units lose their veterancy. And it looks like their both the voltages and the half track ended up focusing down the command infantry and killed them off quite quickly. In the middle of the map, things pretty static. In the bottom side, 257 coming in. Now, if that 257 picks off the the uh, AT gun, that's actually going to allow the 222 to push through very hard down there. And Eugen can see the opening in the front line, most likely, so he'll he'll try and play around that. Now, with the Alpha Clara coming forwards, it reveals the spay. The 222 have taken them out. Um, 81 millimeter mortar is going to be trying to push back those Panzergrens, and will be likely successful in doing so. And the engagement in the town has, for now, been stopped. 42 points in the favour of the Allies, with a 50-50 currently. So it looks like the command's gone down there as well. Uh, we're also going to be finding the 57mm AT gun here. Eugen, I think, has line of sight onto that because of the ALF clutter. So he's going to have to find a way in order to take that out. Maybe bait it with the U-304. It looks like that might be trying what, what he's trying to do. It might be an accident. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I would expect the 222 to come out here and uh, go for that kill while the U304 is engaging. I think that might have been what he was trying to do, maybe just a bit delayed um, with the micro on the bottom side. 257 uh, taking out the AT gun down there, AT gun in the mid also now dead. And that opens up a big chunk of the map for these 222s to exploit. Um, so that's a lot of points actually invested in those AT guns that is now just gone. Uh, and Light Ray literally got no kills from those AT guns. Didn't even kill the U-304 there. And another unit of spy going to be going down to the 222. So there is a M8 Scott here. I'm not sure if Eugen knows that's an M8 Scott. If he does, he can literally charge it down because the M8 Scott shouldn't be able to do too much to his 222. It might be able to force him to fall back with the HE rounds, but the closer he gets, the more chance he has of penetration. And he'll be looking for that kill there, although it looks like he's going to be pulling off. And the 50 cal plus the HE actually does have a chance of penetrating two armor. So he does have to be careful of that. And with that starting to fall back, it could be an issue. But now there's a pack 38 coming up. That's actually already being mortared because it's moving into the same position of the Panzergrens. Um, 222 in the town's actually running low on ammunition. Panzergrens are getting low as well under the fire of the voltages and the M5 half track there. Uh, also with the command infantry dead, that's going to make them surrender once they lose their morale. So that's quite a big deal. 222 is now falling back. That's actually going to be in line of sight of this M5A1 that's been brought up to reinforce. Um, Pack 38 is going to have a go at the M8 Scott, however, is going to be forced to fall back. And I'm surprised not to see this 222 play more aggressively into this salient, especially with the kill onto the M1 gun down the bottom side. There is a Vilfak Verfa here that's going to be trying to pin down the infantry and stop uh, Light Rare from pushing. Pack 38 on the top side, almost getting the M3A3 half track there, or the M3A3 Stuart, sorry. Half track now moving up to engage as well. However, that's going to be one shot. So, an interesting engagement at the moment, quite uh, even across the map. Um, it's just really up to Eugene to try and 
and make some ground on this bottom side where there's a big salient. Of course, he has to be careful that if he moves the 222 through here, that the M5A1 half track doesn't come around and or come down and intercept him. And it looks like another one's being brought in anyway. So maybe uh, Eugen's playing right here and, and just being a bit cautious with his 222 because these are actually really important to keep alive in the phase A for the 21st Panzer. They provide you with a lot of presence. Um, Pack 38 getting more shots onto half tracks. Going to be taking out that M5 half track up there. There is an M8 Spy up in the top side actually. And this could be interesting because the 222 at close range could definitely kill off the M8 Spy. So we'll have to wait and see if that happens. Pack 38 taking a shot at the M8 and the M5A1. However, missing the first, can it hit the second? No, it cannot. And with the second shot from the M8 Scott, I expect that to be pinned down and forced to fall back. The 222 is going to be taking out the command there. And uh, that has left a massive chunk of the map in favor of Eugen. However, looks like the M3A3 might be here to fill the gap. And there is, of course, still the Spay, um, which is moving up into position and providing information. So still quite a lot of pressure for Light Rare, even though it does look bad in terms of the front line. And the only thing that the 21st Panzer really has to counter things like the M3A3s is either the S307 pack or the... Um, Pifel Panzer 35. So we have the U-304s engaging the infantry in the town. However, the M3A3 is now making a push to uh, take some ground there. Looks like the M8 Spy is going to win the duel against the 222. And that's actually quite a big deal because it opens up the top side of the map for Light Rare. Although Pifel Panzer 35 now coming in on that top side, maybe to help with the engagement onto the M3A3 into the town initially. Um, maybe was hoping that um, the 222 would do the job up there, but it seems the Pack 38 has done that for him. And uh, down goes the M8 Scott. So that's going to, I don't know, I think he's going to lose the Alpha up here to the Spay because they can engage out of range of those. But in general, an interesting engagement up the top, which has just left it in the 50 50. Uh, Panzer Grand is going to be coming down to the bottom side here. SGO 7 Pack still moving forwards. That's going to stop this uh, M3A3 from peaking at least. Especially considering that's well in line of sight of Light Rare at the moment. He can see that there. He's not going to suicide his M303. Uh, however, the uh, Spay have now been spotted due to the Panzerguns dropping out. And uh, those are going to go down very quickly. The fellow Panzer 35S is spotted on the top side. Uh, so it looks like the M303 is going to be falling back here. Eugen's also managed to get some Panzerguns quite close up and got a Panzerfaust onto that half track. Maybe he could have got one onto the M3A3 as well. If he jumped back one building, he might have got that shot off. But the Pfeil Panzer 35 is actually in line of sight of the 3A3 at the moment, I think. No, maybe not. On this top side, or like in the mid, We've got the Panzergrenfuhrer being hit by the M5A1 half track with a 50 cal, and that's a two star 50 cal, so that Panzergrenfuhrer needs to be careful. Another 257 brought in to deal with the enemy Morsa, I feel. Although that is currently mortaring the Nueve. 257 is moving in on the bottom side as well. So the M3A3 has moved forward, it's actually found line of sight onto the 222. Really nice positioning from this M3A3. It's out of line of sight of the S307 pack, but it can fire at the 222. And will get the kill there, so that is fantastic. Um, 81mm mortar is kind of out in the open here. Panzergren's trying to make as much ground as possible. Oh, in the town, the M3A3 went down to the 259. That is a big play there. And uh, with the M8 going down in the top side, has allowed... Eugen to make a ton of ground up here. And now we have the Vilfak Werfer coming in, slamming the Nueve and the Pioneers and the Spai. The command infantry is gone because I believe he was relying on the command of the M3A3. So this could all just be surrendered soon. And the 259, they're going to be moving forwards, possibly surrendering a unit of Nueve. Yep, they're going to be gone. And the Spai are revealing themselves in that building. We also see the Pioneers surrender there. Eugene going to be getting that 259 out of range of the grenades of the Spay. Then probably just going to be 
reversing to make those surrender. So the town now completely in favour of Eugen. Really, really well played there, taking out the uh, M303 with a really good flank from the 259. Fantastic stuff. Um, S307 pack is being engaged by the M10 at the bottom side. So it looks like it's up to Light Rare to really um, punish um, the investment of points in the top side from Eugen by pushing in the bottom side himself and, and making the ground there instead. We have moved into phase B now, so we are seeing the elite tanks of the French come out, including the M4A2 here. And we'll have to see how well <coughs> Light Rare can do with those M4A2s and the M10s in this phase because there isn't really too much that Eugen will have to counter those other than maybe the Pack 43s which looks like is coming in on the bot side um, but those can be easily countered by things like the 81mm mortars or at least smoked off so that the tanks can still advance um, M8 Spy is engaging the Befell Panzer 35S the penetration for that M8 onto the Befell Panzer is not great at that range um, whereas it is on the other side of things. 7 AP versus like 3 armor is going to penetrate very easily. So we saw that happen there. And that's quite an investment of points that was just lost for free. Um, 259 is trying to make as much ground as possible. So maintaining the plus 2 now for Eugen. Pack 43 has been dropped off on the bottom here. And that might find line of sight onto the M3A3, might get a shot off, Ooh, did get one shot but didn't hit the mark with it. So there we go, 259 actually going to be forced back by the M4A2 that's coming in from the mid. There's an M5A1 coming in from the spawn there as well. And that M5A1 has a pretty good chance against the Befell Panzer 35 just because it has a slightly higher chance of penetration but the M5A1 actually going to be picking off the 259 there and that pushes things back to a plus one so Light Rare still has a decent chance in this game he's just got to sort of exploit uh, the phase B and try not to be picked off by this pack 43 that is currently rolling forwards into a pretty nice position ideally in this situation you'd probably have either the mortar carriers with like the M21 mortar carriers or you get this uh, 81mm mortar in range without being in line of sight of the pack 43 and I think he's currently just about managed to do that and he's going to be finding the mortar uh, shells onto his target which is good because as soon as this pack 43 gets pinned down the M10 can use the last HE round on it and maybe do a bit more damage there we can also have the M3A3 just sort of rush up the road and, and maybe take it out with the machine guns as well so there's plenty of opportunity um, for light rail on the bottom side and I think the reason that Light Rare has been so successful down here, especially considering like the unit disparison, uh, disparity, um, is mainly due to his recon. His spy have been very, very good on this bottom side. Um, DB7B going to be coming in, smoking out um, the units on the top here, the 259 and the pack 38. He's going to be trying to find room to get his units into these buildings. So Eugen's currently keeping the Panzergrens behind the building here on purpose. Just so they aren't in line of sight of all of this fire support. But it looks like that might bite him if the sappers get in there and throw the 20 HG grenade in his face while the Panzergrens aren't in cover. That could be bad. He could maybe like try and counter that by jumping into the building on top of the sappers. But there we go. If he doesn't do it quickly enough, uh, this, the sappers will just blow him up and that's exactly what happened. Um, the Befell Panzer takes out one of the half tracks there. It looks like a trading of half tracks, especially with the M5A1 taking out one as well. And um, the Spy are going to be uh, going down there. M4A2 is engaging the Brumbar at close range. That Brumbar really can't do anything about that. Um, Pack 43 does find another shot towards the M3A3, I think. Um, the 81mm mortar has done a little bit of damage there, but just needs to find the range again. So this uh, M4A2 has got all day to fire at this Brumbar and eventually what he's going to do is force that to fall back and it might show side armor and uh, then the M4A2 gets the shot or he can just penetrate it in the front armor that works too. So the Befell 
Panzer 35 is going to find another line of sight onto the half track and I really really am enjoying uh, watching both players utilize line of sight so well in this game. Um, Pack 43 has found line of sight onto the 81mm mortar here actually. So if light red is not too careful his 81mm mortar might die. <laughs> Especially considering the more morale damage the, 80, the mortar takes um, the less accurate it's going to be. And there it's even pinned down. So one last HE shell, and that mortar is gone. There we go. So Eugene's dealt with that quite nicely. Now his tanks on the bottom side here, light res, um, have another trouble on their hands, and they're going to have to be forced to fall back. M7 is being brought up. Maybe that can do a better job than the mortar for taking out this pack 43. And we have the 222 pushing in the mid. That has used up all of its ammunition though, but uh, the 7 HE machine gun can do a ton of damage to infantry um, should it get in line of sight. Uh, Pack 38 is going to be finding line of sight onto half tracks in the top side. BFF Earth is completely out of rockets now, so that needs to start to fall back. And we do see two Panzer 4Gs now coming in. So this is going to be Eugen's answer to the M4A2 here. Now it looks like the Befell Panzer 35S actually managed to kill off the M3A3 Stuart there, which was a nice kill. However, I would not be surprised to see that traded with the M4A2. Now uh, we do see some sappers coming up here, although Eugen now has pioneers in position and ready to go. And it looks like there's probably going to be a trading of infantry squads here. Sappers also have the bazooka, so this Fell the Panzer actually has to be very careful. Okay, the Pioneers actually managed to surrender the Sappers before they took the damage themselves. So, that's interesting. Pioneers winning out in that case. Um, the Befell Panzer 35S looks like it was trying to go for that engagement. What's he doing with that? I think he's just going to try and reverse it for now. Get it out of the line of sight and keep it that way. 50-50 currently. Um, 776 points in favour of Eugen. So a very, very even match so far. Um, the 222 going down there in the middle. However, I do feel like, in general, Eugen has picked up a lot more kills. And um, we're also seeing the Pack 43 here uh, now find line of sight onto the 81mm mortar, although it looks like the 257 is going to be the one doing that. And holy moly, was that just a kill from the Befell Panzer 35 onto an M4A2 half um, Sherman? I think it was. What an absolute hero this tank has been today. Wow. That was certainly a kill <laughs> right there. <laughs> That's incredible. Okay, so the 81mm mortar's gone down in the mid now. And Nueve have been revealed. I would not be surprised to see a half track just drive towards those and try and make them surrender. In the bottom side, the M7 has forced the Pack 43 to fall back now. So we might see the advancement of these tanks on the bottom side. But a plus one now in favour of Eugen once again, and he is only solidifying his lead at the moment. Um, but with this uh, Befell Panzer going down, actually back to 50 50, M10 takes that out nicely. Half tracks have moved in on the top side here, and it looks like Eugen's just bringing up some recon. Um, to see what's up and then if there's not too much on the other side of here he can quite simply move this Panzer IV around the tree line and uh, take out both his half tracks and take back that land because that's probably the only reason that he's not still at a plus one it's just this little salient up here with the two half tracks in it but in the mid things falling apart actually quite quickly especially with the 257 they're taking out the AT gun that's quite big and if his new ever go down that's just going to leave an M5A1 half track and the GMC supply vehicle to defend that. Also down here, oh, this is a big mistake. M7 didn't keep the Pack 43 pinned down or smoked. So the Pack 43 did its job, took out both the M3A3 and bailed out the M10. And that stops any push from light rail on this bottom side. That's tragic because it really swings things down there completely. Like ideally what you would have done here is have the M7, um, once the Pack 43 falls back, maybe just smoke off as much as you can and try and get the spay up so that you can get a better line of sight and then get direct shots onto it. But, I don't know, maybe it was just the fact that Light Rare was focused on the top side. Um, he 
you know, let the pack 43 recover its morale and uh, then obviously um, it led to those kills happening. So the Panzer IVs moved into the town here, takes out one of the half tracks. Pioneers trying to take on the sappers. We got Panzergrens taking on some more sappers in the open. It looks like the Panzer IV G though with the Panzergrens will be able to take those out quite handily. We do see the DB7B coming into the mid. That's going to be trying to smoke off the Pack 43 to allow the M5A1 to move up. However, if he doesn't do this to one side or the other, that Pack 43 is still going to find line of sight down that road, which is exactly what's going to happen here. The M5A1 is in line of sight of the Pack 43, as far as I'm aware. And that's going to be a one shot, one kill. Interesting. So on the bottom side, with the Pack 43 going down, there's not actually too much here for Eugen. He's got the mortar carrier, but saying that, a Koenigstiger is on its way, <laughs> and uh, that is not very fun for Light Rare. Um, the Panzer IV G has also found these half tracks in the top side, which has pushed the territory lead to 55% for Eugen. And I think things just get worse from here because Light Rare really can't keep up with the amount of units that the 21st Panzer can put out now, especially with, you know, King Tigers coming onto the field. There's nothing that the French have that can really counter that. And uh, therefore, it's just looking like it's going to go downhill from here. However, M10 is going to be taking out the Panzer IV G, so that's a, a start and a comeback. However, he's got a long way to go now if he really wants to make some ground. And uh, from Light Rare's perspective, you know, things aren't looking too good. It's got a very limited amount of forces. And now he sees the King Tiger come about. That King Tiger going to very easily deal with the enemy M10. So it looks like it's just going to pop that M10 for free. There you go. It was already bailed out, but just picking up the kills there. Panzergrenz in the mid did go down to the M5A1 half track as they moved up, but the Pack 43 are going to be returning the kill there. Panzergren is going to be engaging sappers from the ideal range, getting the MGs on target there. It's going to be great. Going to pin those down. And another half track going to be taken up by Pack 43 on the bottom side of the town, um, which is going to lead to Light Rare's surrender and a minor defeat after 24 minutes and 46 seconds. So there, I think that was a you know, warranted surrender from Light Rare. He did play very well in the early phases, but as soon as you get to phase C and uh, you're completely outclassed by the 21st Panzer, it's just not much else you can do, especially if you are in that position. Um, ideally, what would have happened is the second armoured pushes through phase A and phase B, makes some ground, and then is forced to try and hold it in the later phases, which is when the 21st Panzer would come back. But uh, in this case, Eugene just played around the eight phase A and B very, very well, and then just solidified the victory in phase C. And that was pretty much the gist of it. So the kills in the early game going to this M3A3 for the French. We got a nice amount of um, half-track kills in the 222s in the town there, which definitely helped out a lot. We did see the M4A2 front tool penetrate the uh, Brumbar, which was interesting. And the M10 in the bottom side took out the S307 pack, which was uh, very important. This M7 kind of let the team down by not killing off the pack 43 sooner. And if we go to the losses, it looks like the SBW222s definitely paid themselves off. And that is the beauty of these. They come in, obviously, like I think it's 50 points. You buy the Alpha Cloud for like 15, and then the 222 costs like 35 or something. And then they go ahead and take out two units of spay in a 57 mil AT gun. That's pretty much paid itself off two, almost three times over. Um, so that's really good. Uh, Pack 37's getting some one shots without veterancy. That was interesting. Um, the Panzergrenz took out the WC 52 there. We also see the Befeld Panzer 35. What an absolute hero unit this was in this game. Took out the M4A2 at close range. Fantastic. Took out loads of other units as well. Just the aim time there at close range. Really, really helping it out. And then just later on, King Tyo comes in. Hey, what up? I'm going to win the game and uh, destroys both the M10s on the bottom side, leads to Light Rare's surrender. And uh, there you have it. That's pretty much it. Fantastic game. I actually really, really enjoyed that. It was proper 
uh, close for the majority of the game. Um, Eugene just having the edge though and uh, winning, the, winning out in the end. So fantastic game. Hopefully the second one will be as good. But we'll have to wait and see. Thanks for watching guys and I hope to see you then. Goodbye.